Good morning, beautiful people. So since we're still doing the pre-recorded thing, um, recording in my house, in the dining room. So you may hear some tiki 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 tiki, and that's Taffy the Chihuahua running back and forth. You may hear big barks, that will be Harley the Bulldog. And if you hear little high-pitched trills, that will be the kittens who, I don't even know how old they are, but they're still kind of tiny and they're exploring the house. So for any noises, I apologize, but it's also kind of fun doing this from home. So before we get started, let's pray. Holy, I thank you for this day and I thank you for these people. I thank you that throughout all of the seasons of our life, if we choose to be in tune with you moving in through and around us, you're there. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to experience all of your glory. In your many names we pray. Amen. So the past week has been a little difficult. We've had a lot of things going on. Um, and actually, I guess all of the stuff that started, started two, three weeks before that. So there's been a lot of change happening. And this past week, we experienced the death of Sherry's father. And he was 93. So, you know, he lived a long life and a full life. And still in those moments, you start thinking about things, at least if you're someone like me who has trouble sleeping now and so all night long lays there and thinks. You start thinking about things. And one of the things I thought about was Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And it's funny because like everybody thinks of this chapter at interesting times of their life. People use this in their weddings. But then we turn around and we read it again at funerals. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season. A time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. And when people use it, they tend to only focus on the ones that fit, only the good bits, right? Only the things that make sense to us, because some parts of that passage don't make sense. Like we don't like it when it says there's a time to kill and a time to heal. We like the healing part, not the killing part. And then a lot of people, especially um, during the Vietnam War protests, hated the part that said there's a time for war and a time for peace. Peace is great. We don't want the war part. So what happens is we tend to insert ourselves into scriptures that were written way, way before us, as we've said many, many times. And they weren't exactly written about us, to us, for us. Not always. Sometimes they were just people like us trying to journal and figure life out. So the person that Ecclesiastes is attributed to lived in a farming village. So in a farming village, because the first line says there's a time to plant and a time to harvest. Not the first line of the whole section, but the part that I'm talking about. A time to plant and a time to harvest. And then that next line that people take issue with, a time to kill and a time to heal. Well, if you've ever lived on a farm, worked on a farm, you know 
sometimes things happen to the animals. And the choices are that you can possibly give them medicines that will take care of them and heal them. And sometimes the vet tells you there's nothing that can be done. And therefore, in that moment, what is appropriate is to end their suffering. So what this passage really is about is seasons of life. It's about the ebb and flow of our existence. It's about moving through our existence. And while we look at it with our eyes and we kind of go, it's opposites. It's paired up, but they're opposite of each other. It's still more than that. It's speaking about how there are seasons and everything keeps moving. And sometimes with us, what happens is we don't want to keep moving. The event will happen, whatever it is, whatever season of life we're in, there will be something that occurs. And sometimes we automatically, instinctively just want to freeze. But what the passage is saying is, but that's, it's normal. This is the time for this. But then there's going to be the next time that's going to be for this. Everything's going to keep going. But are we going to keep going? And it's so easy to forget when we're in the midst of everything that we're experiencing. And it's not even just life and death. It's day-to-day -day stuff. When the kids won't cooperate when you're trying to drop them off at school and they throw themselves down in the driveway and have a fit because they don't want to go. That's tough. And if you're like my friend, you might want to just sit in the car and cry and not even fool with it. Be like, forget it, we ain't going to school today. Sometimes the daily things happen and we don't want to keep going. We want to just sit down and say, forget it. And the great part about this passage, even though you don't read it this way, it's telling you there is a time to sit down. There's a time to just freeze. It's okay. There's a time to take a breath. There's a time to wait. Or as Marcy likes to text me often, there's a time to pause. And then when that time is over, the time to move comes into play. So there's this other book that's not in what most of you have in your house. Like if you have a Bible in your house, you're not going to have this book in your Bible because, well, in most places it isn't considered canon. But there's a book called the Book of Sirach, and it's the Book of Wisdom. Chapter 42, verses 24 through 25. All things exist in pairs. A time to laugh, a time to cry. All things exist in pairs. One opposite the other. And God made nothing that was incomplete. Each thing strengthens the good parts of the other. Who can get enough of God's glory? So let's break that one down. Everything exists in pairs. Time to laugh, time to cry. And God made nothing that was incomplete. Basically, the divine appointed all of these things, and they all are meant to be, and they are all meant to be experienced. Every cycle of life is meant to be lived. We're meant to experience it. Even when it hurts. Even when it isn't exactly what we would want it to be. And as we're living through these moments, we're being strengthened. Even when it doesn't feel like it in the moment, when the kids are pitching a fit in the driveway and you can't get them in the car to get them to school, you don't feel like your strength is being built. You feel like you're being torn down. But you live through it. So you know that the next day, you're gonna try a different tactic to make the morning go smoothly so that the kids will get their little booties in the car and go to school. So you grew in that moment. 
because you learned in that moment. So that moment, even though you wouldn't have chosen it and it wasn't your favorite thing ever, made you better. The next part of this passage, the author says, who can get enough of God's glory? Okay, let's put this in our language. Basically what dude is saying, everything is connected. Everything flows as it should. Nothing is incomplete. Everything works as it's supposed to. And when I'm aware, I can see holy moving through me, in me, around me, through Sherry, in Sherry, around Sherry, everybody. I can see that we're all connected and that we make each other better. Who can get enough of that? The author was amazed at how it all comes together. So yeah, there's a time to laugh and there's a time to cry. There's a time to grieve and a time to dance. But we have to be aware that no matter which moment it is that we're living in, Holy is with us. And we have to be aware that even if it feels like this moment is going to be the end of me, it's not. Because the next moment is going to come. The next season of life is going to come. And because you've lived through the others, you're going to be better and stronger for all of the seasons that come next. Endings make me think weird sometimes. And in this week we said goodbye to Mr. Ziggy. And now on Wednesday, I say goodbye to the people that I work with. I don't know how many of them I will actually see in person on that day because a lot of them are working from home because of COVID. But it's a transition. Something has to end for something else to begin. And sometimes when things are ending, be it life, be it jobs, be it relationships, whatever, when it's ending, we have this tendency, it's a human tendency to just want to sit down and fall apart and be like, that's it, I'm done. So what me and all the critters that are making noise in the next room say is, yeah, let's go ahead and fall apart in that moment because it's okay because there is a time to fall apart. But then when that time's over, we go on. We go on to the new thing, to the next phase, to the next season. And we trust that through this process, the ebb and flow of life, the constant cycle that divine has put in place, we go forward knowing that the cycle keeps going and we keep growing if we allow it to be. But it is hard sometimes. And I was thinking about when it is hard, when someone does feel like this is the end of them and they can't move beyond whatever this event is, what can you say? Revelation 22, 13. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. Holy always has been, always will be, and is always on your side, is never against you, is always for you. And in Zephaniah 3.17, it says, your God is in your midst. That means God is living among you. God is there in your presence. No matter what season of life, no matter where you're at in the cycle, no matter if it's the ending of something or the beginning of something, the one who always has been and always will be, whatever you call it, God, holy, divine intelligence, divine, whatever you use. 
ever present, always there in your midst for you, not against you, believing in you, encouraging you, and loving you. So no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, it's okay. It's just a season. It's just a part of the process. And the moment, whether it's a good one or a bad one, this too shall pass. And you'll continue and you'll grow and you'll be stronger I believe it I hope you believe it and if you do and you were here we would say amen and so it is but since it's me and the kittens and the dogs and Sherry we're just gonna say yep that'll do have a great week y'all I love you be blessed